Mr. Omar Gooding. Yes. Welcome to your first one-on-one with Hype Plus. Okay, so where do we begin? Hmm. I want to take it back. I want to know about your life and how you even became a name in Hollywood. And so let's just take it back. California, born and raised, or California, born and raised. Uh, parents are from Harlem. Born in Harlem, raised in the Bronx. Uh, my father, Cuba Gooding Sr. My mother, Shirley Gooding. They had uh, April Gooding, and then one year later, to the day, Cuba Gooding Jr. So they share a birthday, exactly to the day, whatever routine he was doing first year. He did the same thing for second time, Ryan, I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, and then nine years later, well, let's see, five years later, they moved from the Bronx to California, California my way. And uh, then another four years after that, I was born. I was born in, uh, let's see, depending on who asks, either Lakeview Terrace or Pacoima. It just depends on, okay. depend on the day, depend on the day. But yeah. Pacoima Hospital near Lakeview Terrace. Yeah, you know, you know. So, you know, Harlem, you mentioned Harlem, your, mm-hmm. your family being from Harlem. Mm-hmm. How much do you know of that history and how much have you kind of tapped into that side of the family? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, not I, I was brought up. Uh, I would hear the stories, so to speak, you mm-hmm. know, an entertainer's household. And I started my career when I was nine. OK, a lot of people don't remember before, like five, like I do. So from five to nine was probably normal childhood and so forth. So then from nine on, this brain has been used to make money, to memorize line after line and learn how to express myself and so forth and so on. Always articulated and spoke well, which helped me get jobs, you know what mm-hmm. I mean, at a young age, mm-hmm. helped me get jobs uh, that weren't meant for me, Okay. per se. You know, I had an it. agent, you know what I mean, that was like, don't worry about the breakdown. A breakdown is what tells you what the role is about, what they want. Mm. They're looking for a white uh, kid, uh, <laughs> right. skinny, blah, blah, blah. We're going to send Omar in there anyway. You know, and I'm the only brother in there going, OK, let me do that. And then I'd book it. You know, mm. they're looking at the same thing all, all day. And then here comes this black kid you know what I mean? with a mm-hmm. great smile and some good teeth, no braces. And, uh, you know, what I'm saying? And, 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 and it's delivering lines in a way that they weren't expecting. And, you know, so first you got to think out. So where does that box. come from? Is that is that um, natural? It's in the blood. It's in the blood. Yeah. yeah. It's not, it, you know, my father was a singer in the 70s. Right. And yeah, the biggest hit was Everybody Plays the Fool. You know, just don't want to be lonely, rolling down the mountainside. You know what I mean? So his back then as an entertainer, mm-hmm. you entertained was no. Now watch, no, no, no knock on, on these youngsters today, but there was no auto tunes, you know what I'm saying? There was no choreography. They was singing over trash cans, burning, you know what I mean? And when they performed, that was their shot. You know, everything was acted out. Everything was, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so it's just in the blood, vaudeville, you know what I mean? That old yeah. school, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, my brother, it was, it was easy. You know, he did, he took some training. You know what I mean? Myself, I started at nine. You know, it, the story is my brother, knew what he wanted to do. Gotcha. I was the little brother, nine year difference between the two of us, gotcha. little bro, you know, and he sends me in to his agent to pick up a script. So I pick up the script, she sees me and just like, oh, there's another one of you, huh? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like your smile, kid. Right. Let me send you out on some, some auditions and see what happens. I asked my mom if I could go. She's like, really, uh, if you want to, why not? Yeah. Had two auditions in one day and booked one of them. Mm. First one was, you know, scared the hell out of me. It was in a high rise building for some show. Who right. knows? Right. Second one was at a house. It was for an industrial film, McGruff the Crime Dog. A bunch of kids throwing footballs around, just kind of relaxed and calm. And I was able to settle into it and book the damn thing. Right. So it was just like, that was it. I was bit. You know what I mean? Do you see yourself as a legend? No. Why not? I don't see myself as that. It's kind of weird. I don't, I've never been like this. Man, you legendary. Now, I do hip hop, so I, I probably wrote some shit that was. <laughs> Somewhere in there, I'll probably call myself a legend. Um, no, no, no. I think, I think yeah. I've, got a, I've got a ways to go uh, accomplishment-wise based on my potential. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, um, being an actor, you can be an actor your whole life, or you can then start directing and producing and writing. And I've done all of the above. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But I haven't, you know, I see things. This is, this is how this works. In my career now, um, some people will reach out to me directly, not through my agents, and be like, yo, man, how much, you know, help a brother out, come be in this film with me, just, you know, kind of help my name, and now that I do one for me, do a solid, and I'll be like, all right, if I cut through all the red tape of paying everybody, I'd pay if they went through them. 
Yeah. You could just pay me what I, my quote, and let's just do it. You know what I mean? And then I do the project for one day, right. then it'll say starring Omar Gooding. You know what I mean? And then people be at home on Tubi going, that mood is in it for 10 seconds, right? But I'm watching this stuff and I'm like, damn, this guy was up and coming. I should have really helped him. I should have helped mm -hmm. him in the editing room. I should have helped him producing. You know what I mean? Now, I met a brother by the name of Ricky Bruchelle. This was yeah. during the pandemic in uh, 2020, right? And uh, right before the pandemic hit, we were negotiating for me to star in his film. Okay. Pandemic hits, he loses all inv his investors and everything. Everybody goes and hides and, you know, quarantines in mm -hmm. place. And then after two months, <laughs> you know, we talking to each other and he's just like, look, how can we get this film done? Bare minimum, just without every everybody's hiding. And play. I can do a skeleton crew. You love the script. This is one of your breakout performances. If you pull it off, let's mm -hmm. do it. And we found a way to do it. But the reason I'm talking about this is I was on both ends of it. You know what I mean? I was helping him with the writing and adjusting here. Mm -hmm. He sent me the finished product. I gave him my notes on the editing part of it. You know, scenes we should change, different shots. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, and, I, and as I put it together, I said, this is where I need to be mm. using my experience of watching stuff and being a part of things and seeing how it works. Didn't go to film school. Didn't do it that way. Right. I didn't go to college. Right. I went to high school and was sitting there like everybody else. Like, oh my goodness. Oh, thank God. Let me get my, I did the bare minimum. No bullshit. The bare minimum to keep up my grades so that I can get a work permit. Right. You know, and by the time I got out of high school, I was a series regular on the TV right. show. What am I worried about college for? That's just my journey. Right. So I learned on the job. You know what I mean? So now that I know there's different type of directors to work with, I've worked with tons of them. I've worked with directors that are good at directing actors mm -hmm. and some that are good with the technical aspect of it and the execution of it all and getting the right shots and the angles and keeping the bumper. And then there's some directors that can do it all. Very few are the total package. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's very important. You know, I watch these films, I read the script, I say, the script is great. And then you see the movie, and you're like, what the hell happened? Mm -hmm. Where did they lose? You know what I mean? What was on paper? Like, Come on now. So, you know, I think I have a lot to give uh, to the film industry, even television, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then musically, you know, I think, you know, my belief is when you have children, um, a part of you passes on to them, um, essence wise, and even more so when you die. Mm -hmm. When my father passed away, it was a tremendous um, well, there's a lot of words I can use. It was a lot, you know, it was about seven years ago. And we still mourning. You know what I mean? So it, it but I feel things that he would do that are in me that are like, oh, damn, I wouldn't even think to do that. You know what I mean? I wish I could rewind time and ask him some more questions now. We, he always said he was going to live forever and mm -hmm. we believed him. <laughs> you know what I mean? So now as I'm figuring stuff, I'm like, damn, well, I got a lot to do musically. I got tons of stuff to do there. Yeah. And then my career, my lane, I have plenty to do as well. Right. You know what I mean? My, still. In essence, this is why you don't feel like you've hit your legendary. Yeah, not yet, not yet, not yet. If oh. God forbid I was to die tonight, then you can, you know, look through and go, oh, well, dude, look at all the stuff, big man. He grew me up. I was, you know what I mean? I, I get that a lot. Like, oh man, you raised me. I like, I raised me about, too. You know, <laughs> jokingly, you 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 mentioned that, but how do you feel about that when you see people pass away hmm. and then they get their flowers finally? Yeah. Has that ever rubbed you the wrong way to see your tears? <sighs> it's the way of the world man you know i mean the good thing is that saying alone has helped a lot give them their flowers while they're here you know what i mean before that saying came along it just didn't happen now people are going yeah i'm gonna give you flowers now man i get that i get dms all the time like i just gotta let you know bro you got me through some tough time you know what i mean i did a show called family time 91 episodes on bounce network they most people saw it in prison most people <laughs> contacted me was like yo it's free in here we watching this bro you got us through some stuff you know what i mean Baby boy, same type of thing. It touched brothers. Yeah. At, and I would see guys that would approach me in tears saying, man, you, the frustration, that, that's, that's me. You know what I mean? And I'm like, well, I'm happy that I was able to portray it. But those were John Singleton's words, word for word. He was a true writer, director. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it, it made me think, you know, you're telling us about how you got into the business. It, mm -hmm. it kind of seemed like you just kind of, it was a natural layup. 
yeah. to it. Easy. I'm sure your brother being who he became in the industry would also help influence you to see where you can go with Copy. it. Did you study like other greats or like people in the business? Just like being a fan of entertainment, which means I watched a lot of TV. I watch movies that come out, especially movies uh, with people of color as the leads and yeah. the stars in the 90s. And we grew up on the sitcoms. So, yeah, I studied them. I borrowed from them. You know, I was on a series called Hanging with Mr. Cooper mm -hmm. starring Mark Curry. And what, maybe 10 or so years ago, we had a conversation on his podcast. And he was like, man, your timing was so good as a youngster. And I'm like, bro, I learned from you. And he was like, wow, what a compliment. I'm like, compliment? I'm serious. <laughs> I didn't go to study nowhere. You know what I mean? I was 12, 13, 14 years old, man. But I'm watching him, you know, and when the first two years, I was a, uh, what was it called? Seven out of 10, which means I wasn't in every episode. You know what I mean? And then the final two seasons, I was a series regular. Uh, but by then I was polished. You know, I was thinking about this earlier. It was kind of crazy. And then after that, I rolled into smart guy, you know, and I met a, I met a cat at the sushi spot that I go to. And he said, and it's so funny, man, because this is this is, I think, the important thing about my legacy and legendary status is there's a lot of things that I have to clear up that need to be known. My father's favorite saying he always says is you can't sell a secret. Okay. Now, my brother and I didn't set out to be not that close or not to act in, in other things. It's just we're two alpha males nine years apart. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a general, it's, that's a whole decade of like, he's got his people. I got my thing. He was break dancing. I, I'm rapping like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just a different thing, but it's still, I'm still to this day meeting people going, Oh, why didn't I put that together? Cuba Gooding Jr. Omar Good. I had no idea. Yeah. I walked in here and asked y'all if y'all knew who my father was. And it was like, oh, oh, that's your dad. No, I mean, I knew he was a singer, but he sung that song. You know what I mean? And I feel uh, that it is my duty to make that before I go, make it make it less of a. You had no idea. Like really, you 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 didn't know that. Okay. Well, there's a couple of ways we can fix this. There's a couple of ways. I mean, people call me. I've been called Omar Gooding Jr. before, and it just bugs the shit out of me. At first, I thought it was funny. Then it was like, okay, it's getting a little ridiculous. Now, people, <laughs> I've I've had contracts typed up. This is the agreement between Omar Gooding Jr. and I'm like, ah, nope. Tell him no. Uh, <laughs> everything no. And they were like, what? What I? Why do you oh, I'm sorry, my assistant. I see how it, their mind works, how they work it out in their head. Oh, who's the famous name? Sammy Davis Jr. Okay, and let's say his brother was Tommy. Oh, Tom, Sammy Davis Jr. brother? Oh, Tommy Davis Jr., right? That has to be his name. And it's like, that's not how it works. But anyway, so I, I, I get that misconception. Yeah. You know, um, so much that we're going to be able to unpack in this. Uh, and I look forward to <laughs> We're going to try. We're going to try. Continue to um, go down this road with you. Yeah, you did mention, you know, being a young man, being able to recognize how to, like, pronounce, you know, pronounce your words and right. present yourself. Right. Was there a time where you were maybe overlooked because you weren't black enough? Hmm. Because you were too, you know, too nope. Kool-Aid. Uh, <laughs> what happened was, uh, this is where the hat goes off to John Singleton. The era that I grew up in was black 90s sitcoms as far as where my, um, my career really started and took off, right? Mm -hmm. And in that era, it was hard to go from comedy to drama. They just, you just weren't taken seriously. Mm -hmm. You can audition and kill it. Mm -hmm. And then the producers and the best will look at it and be like, oh man, who, this is your, cho your top choice? Uh, that's great. What's his name? And who, and where is he? Oh, he's from, he got a TV show? No, 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 no. Let's go get a rapper or let's go get somebody else and just a bigger name, blah, blah, blah. And it was just hard to break that. John Singleton watched a, a, a movie that I did that I was in um, called Freedom Song about the first sit-ins in Mississippi. I just played one of the kids that got arrested at the, at the counter. And he saw a scene that took that long and said, that's going to be Sweet Pea and Baby Boy. Mm. Sent me the script, told me to shave my head and, and, uh, and see me in three months. And, you know, the rest was history. But then after that movie came out, now I'm getting calls to do everything. You yeah. know what I mean? Whereas before I had to audition and I was trying yeah. and this and that. And I'd kill the room or I'd kill the, you know, I'd do my best. You know what I mean? And yeah. sometimes politics came into play. So going into it, how bad did you... Did you know that you needed that role? How bad did you need the role? Wow, I had no idea. I mean, you know, the, the wild thing about it is um, I am a, I, a, a, essentially a TV guy. You know, I love comedy. I love sitcoms. I love making people laugh. You know what I mean? So I, the fact that I wasn't doing movies didn't bother me. It's just something that I knew was gotcha. going to be a thing. You know, my brother's doing Boys in Hood. Now he's got this Jerry Maguire thing. And I'm like, go ahead, man. I'm getting this weekly check. But go ahead and get your head. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know, you know, I know my lane and I'm staying in it. And the funny thing is, even after Baby Boy, 
We filmed it in 99, 2000, came out around 2000, 2001. Mm -hmm. But before it actually hit, I still got to eat. Now I was finished with Smart Guy, so I went and booked another TV show. Right. And that TV show put me on hold for like a year. They paid me, okay. but I was on hold. Right. What is, I was getting what is on hold. Now on hold means you know. you're not allowed to start any other major productions if you're under contract with another one. Right. So mm -hmm. they held and they were holding me for movies, which is bizarre. Usually you're on hold on a TV show. That means you can't do other TV shows. But this whatever kind for whatever damn reason yeah. <laughs> they were they had um, scheduled. See, what it wound up happening was kind of crazy is I booked a series. We were supposed to film. It never filmed. They decided to scrap the thing, but pay us anyway. Right. So they paid me to hold me. Then we had a start date. That start date conflicted with a couple of movies. <sighs> one movie. One movie in particular was um, nothing big, nothing crazy. This is one called Eight Mile. Mm. Yeah. Being a rapper, it was no big deal that they wanted me to go, you know, audition next to Eminem and you yeah. know maybe be the Makai Pfeiffer Roy. It, it, it was no big deal. <laughs> uh, another one. Whew, what's the name of this one? This is another one. Antoine Fisher okay. with uh, Denzel Washington. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, so, so you know, that's just how it is. I'm like, look, I got to do my TV thing. So, you know, and then I would, I, I, after, you know, my lineage, you look at it. Wild and Crazy Kids was three years. Next thing was Hang With Mr. Coover, five years, consecutive. Yeah. Right after that, Smart Guy, three years, boom. Then I did Baby Boy. Baby Boy, mm -hmm. boom, it's not out yet, so I booked another show. We, I just told you how that went. You know, then it, it, the list goes on, man. I did a series called Playmakers okay. for ESPN. That was one year and done. Uh, Barbershop, the series. Yes, on Showtime. Is oh, Barbershop, we know the movie. Yeah, we also did a series <laughs> for a whole year. That went one and done. I did a Miami Medical, another show. Man, I'm not Who I'm tired just thinking about it. I've done so many TV shows. You know what I mean? Then yeah. I did Family Time for 91 episodes. Yeah. And then even now, I just signed a, t a contract. TV shows is, is That's it. Your lane. You know what I mean? Was there ever, you know... I just had a recent conversation with EDI Me mm. Outlaws, and I asked yeah. him about, you know, did Tupac, being who he was, overshadow yeah. what he was, EDI Me, in his own right? Yeah. And I would have naturally assumed and asked you the same question that, you know, Cuba Gooding Jr. being your brother kind of like overshadowed the moves that Omar was making on his own. Did that, how did you deal with that? No, man. Uh, you know, and I've had that question before, so I'm going to try to answer it a different way. Um, there's two things. For one, it was never a negative. Okay. You know, when he won the Oscar, mm. that was such an accomplishment for us, mm. not just the Goodings, but us as a people. They weren't just handing out Oscars yeah. for black folk. Yeah. When he got it, we we're like, boom, we got it. All right. Let me work on something else now. You know, maybe an Emmy, a Grammy or something. Right. But the Oscar, we, we did that. It wasn't like, oh, man, I got to get one now or else he did it. Oh, hell no. <laughs> He let me go. He let me hold it to polish it every other weekend. Like, it, you know, it's in the house. So that's fine. You know what I mean? But it didn't become a competition thing with us. You know what I mean? It was an accomplishment, accomplishment. And then you move on. So when I would go in the audition rooms, just like I said, how people didn't know that we were brothers it would be the same thing. They'd be like, hi, how you doing? Omar Gooding. Nice. Any relation to? I said, uh, Cuba. He said, yeah, this is my brother. <gasps> we love him. Oh, my God. That <laughs> the room would just get laughter and everything. Oh, my God. Like him now that you oh, said yeah. that, and da, 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 da. you ready to read? I'm like, hell yeah! All right, blah, blah, blah. oh man, we love, we love him. And guess what? You got it. Oh, you don't say. Wow. But but it was always a it was always a plus. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, all right, I could say more, but I'll let you ask it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, with it being with it being a plus, I I would also assume you know how did you position yourself just as someone to be Omar Gooding? Like, did hmm. you intentionally avoid certain things? Um, That's another great question. You know what's so funny? Yeah. I'll tell you this story. I do music, right? Mm -hmm. When people hear my music, they're, they're a little surprised uh, because they weren't expecting it to be any good because why haven't I put albums out and had hits and so forth and so on? So when it is good, they're like, oh my God, what the hell? Yeah. Right? And uh, like I said, I'm a TV guy and it keeps me very, very busy, you know? So, but there's a lot of stories I can tell. We've had deals and my father and my mother split up and then they got back together and then we signed a deal uh, with Trump Records and we put out a single called Mama Cedars and then we had a deal in place with QD3 and the Sound Lab, but then Tupac dies and she was supposed to, his, um, he was supposedly uh, engaged to Quincy Jones' daughter and that was part of the label. So that all fell apart. And I was like, well, that got shelved. You know what I mean? So all these little things just kept happening and happening and happening. But there were a couple of incidents where when I um, 
was, I guess, was what it was called. Back in the day when you tried to get a deal, you go in front of a record label and mm-hmm. then you would perform. You know, okay. you'd rap and this and that. And for a couple of different reasons, we used to perform, we used to battle, we used to battle, we used to do it all, man. We used to freestyle, all that shit. And I had a group and we competed in the Budweiser uh, Best of the West competition, right? Okay. We did really good in that. And for some reason, they didn't want cursing. So we learned how to sound aggressive and to be hard without cursing. Okay. And then it just kind of stuck for a while. And I remember we, when I would like, we would perform for labels and shit, they'd be like, oh, y'all don't be cursing. You should do gospel. I'm just like, mm. okay, nigga, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that would kind of put a brother off. Or they go, oh, you that guy from that TV show. Oh, well, we should do like this hang with Cooper rap. And then it'd be like TV with yeah. glasses. I was just like, no, nah, nigga, if you don't knock it off. So I hid my name and would rap under pseudonyms and fake names. First, I was Flex for a while. I had a friend named Smooth, was Smooth and Flex. Like, what? My you know, dad always said that. What the hell they call you Flex? I was like, nigga, it was just a name we picked. Never mind. And then it was, uh, you know, my friends called me Big O. So I started rapping under Big O. I even put an album out mm. called The Excuse, produced by Focus from Aftermath. So okay. the thing is phenomenal. Brilliantly produced. It's a great album. And, but I released it under Big O. And for the album cover, I put a hat over my head, covering half of my face, so you only see my mouth. It's the dumbest marketing idea ever. So I didn't use my name, and I didn't, you know, but that came from a couple of the stories I told. I even met one famous DJ. Uh, we were all performing, and he came to meet us after the thing was over with, and saw that it was me in the group, and changed his whole tune, and turned around and walked out the door. I said, what the hell was this? I was like, damn! You know what I mean? So it made me kind of hide, but then, you know, in recent years, I re-released that album, The Excuse, uh, under Omar Gooding, okay. and now I begin branding myself, right? So I never really, the long-winded way of answering your question, I never really set out to say, this is how I make myself different from my brother, or blah, blah, blah. When I was younger, bro, and I was thinking about this earlier too, I loved my big brother, I did everything he did. I'm talking about, there was a lot of copycat things that I started doing yeah. intentionally, and then unintentionally that God just worked out. Let me take you back. He used to perform, he actually was on a show called Putting on the Hits, and it was this lip syncing competition. Okay. And him and his buddy did a performance where they lip sync the show okay. by Dougie Fresh, okay. they, right? So they did the Slick Rick and Dougie Fresh, the show, right? Mm-hmm. He's performing this, they go all the way to the finals and wind up losing at the end because some girl can spin her head around and one of the judges was like, was in the exorcist, some, some wild ass story, right? But me, me and the little brother, I go do it in the talent show. And we make noise and da 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 That was the first time I remember copycatting. But I always wanted to, you know, he was great. I'd get him to fights and come running home. My brother, he'd come chasing niggas down the block. That was my big bro, right? The acting thing was an accident, but I fell into it. And I was, you know, he would always tell me, do your own thing. Like, you know, you, I hear you rapping. Do that. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't got to do what I do. And I'm like, I'm not, it's not on purpose. But then look how God do. He does. Boys in the Hood, and then John Singleton calls me for Baby Boy, like 10 years later, it's wild. Even the same high school we went to, was North Hollywood High School, the last time uh, that the, the school won in this competition that they do every year, they have two festivals, okay. DTASC festivals, Drama Teacher Association, competitions, right, where we compete against all of LAUSD. They won first place when he was a senior. Nine years later, I go freshman, junior, senior. I compete every year, and on the, my senior year, I take home first place wow. in a Shakespeare festival. Half, uh, I did a monologue, half comedy and drama. <laughs> kind of foreshadowed my career. Okay. Uh, bottom from Midsummer Night's Dream, and then King Richard III for, uh, but don't you, don't you try it. Like, give us a little, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I was like, a th- I was counting in my head earlier how many s- TV show episodes that I've done. I've done like over 600 episodes of stuff. Like, it's insane. There's so much in here that I've programmed and then forgot. People was like, give us a line from, no, you give it to me and I'll recite it. <laughs> I don't have nothing in here stored, man. But anyway. You know, in 1997, your brother would win an Oscar for uh, Best Supporting Actor. Yes, sir. Fast forward, I think about, you know, other famous brothers in Hollywood, black brothers, yeah. brothers. All right. <laughs> All right. I think about, you know, Chris Rock at mm. the Oscars. Yeah. And it just makes me, you know, everyone says, you know, what they would have done. Yeah. So let's yeah. let's let's do a time travel. Nineteen ninety seven, your brother, you know, is on that stage getting his Oscar Oscar speech. He makes a joke at somebody in the crowd. Ah! They get up there and they slap your brother. <laughs> what is Omar Gooding doing in that moment? And 
Will Smith was out. I, I know there might be politics to this answer, but right, yeah, right. what are you doing in, in that regard? You see your brother get slapped. So just to be literal, uh, because when when he won the Oscar, I wasn't at the Oscars. I was at home. They sent a camera crew to my house, which was wild. And they said, uh, we're from E Entertainment, wherever it was. Yeah. And we want to like knock, knock. I'm like, what's that? Now? We got a viewing party here. And they're like, yeah, we want to. Um, is it OK if we bring the cameras in? And I'm like, for what? I said, we want to tape your reaction because we have a feeling your brother's going to win. I was like, all right. But if he lose, y'all better get out of here quick. Like, you know what I mean? I'm making jokes. I still didn't think it was going to happen. Okay. Like never in a million years. And I remember watching, we were all quiet, and all I heard was, and the winner is, cute, that's it, that's all I needed to hear. And everything, it was just pandemonium from there, right? Mm. Um, but, to answer your question, I, I mean, so if it happened like that, uh, yeah, we'd be on our way to Hollywood, and it'd be, and I was, uh, we'd be in trouble. I'd be, I'd be jail jail. If I was there, yeah. forget about it. Cause Cause we don't play that. We don't. We don't. I can tell the the, the 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 gooding. Yeah, yeah, but that's easy. That's an easy call. It's easier to say now, and we're different type. But I also think, in my opinion, it's it's so it's kind of messed up to say, but it's it's true, man. To ask a question, I tell you, I think I think he slapped. I think he understood who he was slapping. I think he okay. calculated that and went, I can get away with slapping him. What is he gonna do? What is his people going to do? Ain't nobody going to do nothing. I can do that to him. He temper And that's like the it. only person he probably could have <laughs> Like, probably only. Like, my yeah. brother? First of all, my brother would have went, oh, wow. No, my brother's trained in martial arts. He did took boxing. He's a beast. He's the one I used to call, uh... I was always big. Uh, I was fighting a kid. We fell under the bushes. His big brother jumped on me. I couldn't wait to get home. I was like, bro... <laughs> that dude, that, he ain't the one. Yeah, he ain't I could definitely tell that. Nah, he's the hand one. It was the, too, too many. The uh, brothers uh, don't seem to be playing that. I've seen different moments where it just shows that. You know, yeah, not the yeah, ones. yeah. No, it's how do you, similar. you know, how do you navigate with that? Because you guys are, you know, still people and Absolutely. you are authentic black men. Yeah. But you're also in a space that kind of you got to be cooking. That's together. a very important question, bro, because um, I believe that you have to understand that when you move about yeah i don't understand how people celebrities in general say oh man why didn't they leave me alone while i was out why are they bothering me while i'm doing this you're a celebrity mm -hmm. you have to take those precautions i have security do i need him has he ever had to do anything to protect me no it's a paycheck but it's also just a barrier it's just sometimes you just need somebody going oh yeah not there no no uh yeah well let me know okay i'll, I'll let them know i'll let them know some people are just different. They're built a different way. My brother don't have security. He don't give a damn. That's why he's on TMZ so much and I'm not. He don't care. He was just like this. Whatever. What they want to do? I'm boxing. <laughs> but but me, I'm just like, mm, let's go ahead, man. Go, go on. Half of it's giving a brother a job. The other half is like, yeah, nah, nah, nah. I'm not, I'm not going to stand in the line or go to the front and be like, you see, it's me. Yeah, let me in. No, I'm going to send my guy over there to be like, yeah, I got all my good over here, man. He was, okay, cool. Hey, man, come on. Let's go. Like, you know what I mean? So, but you have to understand that as you as you navigate through the world you have to know if you're going to the store you know that's funny every time i go somewhere my wife be like why are you getting all snaps like because you never know who's out there it could be tmz it could be a selfie i gotta look right it can't because all it takes is one bad time they, oh you see oh oh and it fell off see them. <laughs> it's your shoes oh i'll be like mm -mm. i'm going to 7-eleven i got to be right you're wearing suits at 7-eleven <laughs> you, know what I'm saying? You, you never know I don't know who's in here. I don't know mom. Okay. But yeah, man, I think I, you definitely got to be cognizant of, of where you go, how you travel, what you move, and just know, know your wealth. I, don't, I believe that people, when they meet celebrities, mm -hmm. they act the way they act out of excitement. It's always flattering. People say, oh, man, you get bothered. Does that bother you? Hell no, it don't bother me. It'll bother me if they don't say nothing. I walk through a crowd of people, especially African-American, don't nobody notice or nothing. I'm like, damn. <laughs> I got to go on social media or something. Man, nobody said nothing. But they might feel this is their only time seeing this guy. You know, every time I go somewhere that I probably shouldn't be, everybody's like, you know who you look like? Because they, they don't believe it's me. They're like, why are you? This is Watts. Why, why are you? I was like, well, my partner actually live over there. We just, you know, going to see his mama. And this, uh, huh. And then this <laughs> selfie. Oh, my goodness. I'm, Man. Niggas and all. Okay. But, um, uh, but yeah, anyway, I, I, I'm, I'm very uh, aware of my surroundings at all times. It makes me want to talk about just the representation of being a black man in Hollywood. Hmm. And then I'll even add to a layer of that a black heterosexual male in hmm. Hollywood. Well, if you all go ahead now. So, you know, let's, let's kind of unpack that. Do yeah. you think, you know, if, if you maybe play the game a certain way and you, I will, I'll suggest if you were in a, a homosexual man, do you think that would have 
altered your career for a bit. Thousand percent. Because I'm the type of heterosexual man that will not compromise for two reasons. Okay. One, um, I'm the type of person that moves around in the world. So I know how, you know, I, I couldn't do something even if I'm like, all right, fine, it's just acting. Mm -hmm. And then you meet somebody like, damn, I saw you with that. I say, oh, hell no, no listen, man, that's acting. I, I, I move around. So that's one thing. That's, that's part of it. Other, I won't be able to do it justice. I just, I, there's certain yeah. roles I just wouldn't even consider because I'm not going to be able to pull it off, man. I'm, I'm offend them more than they're going to be offended by me saying something slanderous. They're going to be just like, oh, come on now, really? You know? And I just, you know, it, it, that's the tip of the iceberg, you know, and I just don't feel, you know, this is funny. I talk to, to, to a lot of uh, up, up and coming youth and people that are in, in, inspired and say, oh, man, I'd love to do this. And, you know, I'm waiting for my one shot. Listen, keep waiting. Don't feel like you said give it to them sometimes. Look, don't feel like you have to do anything. You don't have to do nothing. You get your shot, your time will come. You might have to wait longer. You might have to gut it out for a little bit, but there's no have to. Nobody say, oh, everybody puts on a dress. Not everybody. Mm -hmm. I ain't seen Denzel put on Nair lip gloss. I ain't seen that boy do anything where I've been like, oh no, you too? I'm sorry, I mean, but I'm just serious. It's, it's I, I don't believe the, you had to do it. You can play the game. They do it all the time. How many okay. times you didn't wind and dine and did all that and then she said, see you tomorrow. And you was like, damn, but you got the free drink. That makes me, you know, it, this is, this is, this is great. This is great. Cause it makes me think, okay. One of the first things I recognize about Omar is a smile. Approachable. Yeah. And it makes me think about Hollywood. And I think about Terry Crews' situation. <laughs> Approachable. <laughs> right. Let's unpack that. <laughs> that was wild to me too. It was just like, where are they? You know, it's funny too. Yeah. Um, this is wild. I remember, damn, can I tell this story? Man, it's fine. Uh, I remember when my brother, ah, this is a tough one. Well, let's try to tiptoe around it because okay. this is the world we live in. Basically, he was kind of propositioned or something and he told my father about it. Like, this is what happens in Hollywood all the time. But I was like, what? You mean to tell me this man asked you if you ever decide not to be a man that to, to, to call it like that and you was okay with that, you know? And I had heard that and that made me go, damn. You know what I mean? And not to not no, maybe some people seem more approachable, and that could have been because of the roles he's taken. Yeah. You know, we've seen boat trip. We've seen things that make you go, damn, nigga, why? Uh and maybe that made him seem approachable, but I've never been approachable. I've, you know, I gotcha. but I've also had that. Well, I wish we could, but they, and they know. They'll be just like, nah, not him. But this one, I, ooh, I take you home. Blah, 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 blah. Like, you don't bring probably, me. Yeah, Omar, you probably don't tell him. Well, what I'm saying what is, say? yeah, but I, well, I would react if they just, they understand, they would look and go, yeah. nah, don't mess with that one. Like, I remember, I, this is funny too, because I remember, yeah, this is a better story to tell. Smart guy, mm -hmm. right? One of the episodes of Smart Guy, the, the uh, writers came into my dressing room and said, we want to talk to you about an episode we have coming up. We think it'd be real funny, but we want to make sure that you're okay with it. And I was like, go ahead, tell me the story. So what well, the story is, uh, TJ um, and Mo are parents of an egg, but TJ's going to be more like the dad and Mo would be like the mom, but you're not going to put on a dress. You don't have to wear any makeup or anything like that. It's just the way you respond will be like the protective mom where he'll be more like the dismissive dad. And it'll be hilarious if I, and I was like, you brought all y'all in here to tell me this. Like I was going to start fighting people like, what? I wish y'all would. But they, they really knew like, I'm just, if you just read it and trust me. And I was like, all right, I'll read it. And I read it and it was hysterical. And of course I did. It was nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, it was funny. Mm -hmm. I think there's ways to be clever and funny. Like, <laughs> it's funny. I was doing. Uh, family time, 91 episodes, right? Mm -hmm. I keep saying how many episodes we did. I did a lot of episodes with them. And after a while, I pride myself on being funny without having to do physical comedy. Okay. They say, oh, we got this. We want you to fall on the floor and laugh. It'll be hilarious. Mm -hmm. Why do I got to fall on the floor to make it funny? I bet you I can look at them a certain way or find a way to say the line. It'll be funny. Oh, we think it'd be great if you had on the wig with the blah, blah, blah. Why would I have to do all that? I think I can do it this way and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. Then I gained weight. And they were like, we're going to do all these fat jokes. <laughs> and I was like, fat jokes, huh? All right, I'll maybe let one or two slide, but after a while, you watch your mouth, mm -hmm. you know? And I had to, at a certain point, I was like, yeah, you're about to cut them fat jokes out. We're going to be fighting. Like, I'm serious. Like, it, this it's, is it's, family time. It's family time. I was like, it's not a game. 
And they writers would write it, and I come right, hey, Manly, what I say about it? He's like, oh, you right, yeah, cut all those, let's move it over, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, you don't think I'm funny enough? Well, you think you have to laugh at me? They're like, no, you're right, bro. We'll, we'll change it. You come in, you freestyle it, you do whatever you want. You have to stand up for yourself. But if you let them get away with it, they'll yeah. do it. That seems like the industry is, is, is about pushing boundaries yeah. on, all, on all fronts. Yeah. And so I could see that if you don't have a certain uh, inner strength about yourself, you can That's get it. trampled over it. And uh, that says a lot. What do you do for spirituality? Well, I think, you know, and it's great, man. You know, I got, a, I, got a, I got what they call a praying mama who got saved right before I was born, which makes, makes it, she's a little ostracized with the rest of her family because the rest of her family is, for all intents and purposes, secular. I mean, she got saved. But she's the one that's like, yo, well, you need Jesus. I need to help you out with it. Well, you need to come to God. And she's one of those type of Christians that are very pushy because she got saved. She feels she has to save people. But she's all I knew. But I also have a father who was who had two parents. One was an atheist and the other one was a Muslim and a Christian and kind of flip flop. So he was all over the place. You know what I mean? So, but he he'd just be like, son, you make up your own mind. Like, you know what I mean? So I kind of had the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. But I've watched miracles happen. I've seen God like not like. Yeah, yeah, I've heard the stories. I would watch my mom pray things into existence, bro. Pray things. We were homeless. Mm. Homeless, lived in a car, and we would sing every day a mantra. She'd say, one day we're going to live, not live in a car. One day we'll have an apartment. One day, and every day, one day we'll have an apartment. Next thing you know, we get in a damn apartment. She was like, okay, one day I'm going to stop working these jobs. Next day, you go, one day, in Jesus' name, you're going to get a series. And she would always say, hello. She went from working at Broadway to Nordstrom. She would always come home from Broadway and say, goodbye, Broadway, hello, Nordstrom. She would sing that over and over and over. One day she started working at Nordstrom. I'm like, go ahead, well, she, well, she will. And, and, you know, but that's just one, an example. But there were so many things that would happen. I would just see God working and working. We broke, had no idea what was going to happen all of a sudden. You know, people say, oh, that's just luck. Hey, luck my ass. That was God. You know what I mean? And I would see these things. So, um, you know, I know there's power in prayer. Yeah. You know, I know that, I know that, even when I hear my father on that side going, it's like, even if it calms you down and puts you in a still place so that you can hear your own thoughts. But I know what you're hearing is God. You, if you right. still enough, right. you can hear him. It's not rocket science, you know, and sometimes sometimes you just have to be still enough. You know, you want to call it meditation. You want to call it prayer. You want to go to church. I don't go to church enough in my mom's words. I don't tithe enough in my mom's words. Uh, but, <laughs> but yeah, me and God have a good relationship. Uh, because he's, he's, he's not always on my time, but he's always right on time. You feel me? Yeah. It just makes me think about, you know, more of just an in-depth conversation mm. that you're having with yourself Yeah. because you are considered a child actor, even though yeah. you started at nine, That's what I'm saying. but we don't see you running down the highway naked and losing yeah. your, your rocker. Right, right. Like what have you been doing? And have you ever reached out to other peers that you've seen kind of lose it in this game? Have you ever had man? Oh, where are you getting these questions? It's tough too, man, because I've always I've always been a leader. You know, it's funny because I was talking with my sister, and uh, we talk about my mom. We have our own like. We got to find a word for this, man. When siblings can talk only to each other, you know what I'm saying, and that's our therapy. You know, mom, this da da da. I can't talk to nobody else about this. It's about well, yeah, we're woman. And she'll call my brother, and they have their own relationship with me. Um. When you grow up in the entertainment industry, let alone just period, you know what I'm saying? Um, it helps if you have someone that you can talk to, mm -hmm. right? Um, me personally, being the type of person, you know, all oh, what I was getting at earlier was that, you know, we were talking about how my mom would always say, where'd you learn that from? Who told you that? Who taught you that? And I'm like, no one teaches me nothing. <laughs> I've always people, I'm the youngest in the group and people would come to me like, what are we doing today? All right, what's our next move? Okay, how are we going to work this out? Da, da, da. And then I, I figured out it was never stressful. You know, how's it like being entertaining your whole life? It's all I've known. You know what I mean? So um, having, having, you know, support group helps i guess you know what i mean having god helps of course you know what i mean um but for me i've always known that there was a reason i've always felt a sense of purpose you know okay. what i mean so starting early didn't seem early 
to me, you know. Like, if, you had, if you could have changed anything about it, like, what would you do? I, well, I probably would have went to college. I would have I learned a lot more. Because yeah. I've learned I've learned a lot of things on the job. You know what I mean? Google is my friend. Type of, <laughs> you know, raising kids now. I ask your mama, huh, huh, what's the what of what? I don't know. Go, Alexa, <laughs> do this homework for me. Like, you know what I mean? So there's some things I would have rather um, learned, been more learned, just, you know, but... I'm one of those people like we were talking earlier as this comes full circle about legendary status. Well, I'm just now learning really how to work a room. You know, I love my father. He would come in and just command and he would talk and speak and present. He would just be so articulate and wise and he'd learn, he knew about anything. Why would you want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? He, he, he'll let you know, he'll laugh, you'll, you'll hurt yourself laughing about it. You know what I mean? And my sister said, damn, you get more and more like it, more and more like daddy every day. And it's weird. I'm like, eh, ain't that weird, but I get what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? So I'm getting there. I'm getting there. You know what I'm saying? It's just a matter of, uh, and then with raising kids now, because I started late. I started at 40. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Now my wife, I've been with her for 20 years. Got you. Okay. Right? But we need to start having kids. <laughs> That's about six years ago. You understand me? Right. And I love it because other than my knees hurting, uh, because I have patience, not just for them, but for her. You know what I mean? Like, and now it's just uh, deciding what I want to pass on and letting them be, knowing that I started as a child actor myself. Everyone's like, oh my God, they're beautiful. They need to be in the business. Uh-uh, don't do that. Don't yeah. do that. It'll happen when it's going to happen. And if you see them, you're like, oh, it's, it's going to happen. These kids, uh, it's, it's just... You it's, see yourself in... Oh, it just oozes out of them. It's just, they set up, you know, I used to talk to them. I'd say, oh, my, was you, you had little fake friends you would talk to? Oh, yeah. I had little friends, I gave them names. They said, don't, as long as you don't answer back, we can answer back. We had full conversations. I would act out scenes. You know, I always knew what I was going to do in that sense. So it was going to be entertaining in some kind of way. And they were like, there's the mic. Let's go get to it. These kids, are, they're fearless. So. It makes me think about, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about a, a name and, you know, I'm sure you've worked with this person or at least crossed paths. But I think about Orlando Brown <laughs> and that. That's so funny you said that. You know, that trajectory because he started off. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're getting at because that's where we're going at. And I kind of, I think I blocked it out on purpose. Two people I want to talk. I also want to talk about Merlin Santana. Mm. Um and we'll get back. You see, you do Orlando, but even with Merlin, you know, so I, I've had a couple of peer, friends that I grew up with. When Merlin came out here from New York, he asked me a lot of questions. He was on Hang With Mr. Cooper with me. Mm -hmm. And um, he was always quick to be like, yo, so what do you think? What? And I was like, yo, you're doing good. Just keep doing your thing. Like that type of thing. Like, yo, you're yeah. good. Right. And he's like, yo, I'm auditioning for this thing called Steve Harvey. If I get this show, you think it, you think it'll be? I was like, yeah, bro, do your thing. You know, and as it took off, he's like, you think this thing gonna last? You think it's gonna last? Like, bro. Like you good, yeah, right? Yeah. But his personality, you know, I, I, I made a lot of friends. Well, I would say a lot of friends, but I would be friends with people that other people would have a problem with. Gotcha. But we were cool. And I was like, well, as long as you don't cross me, we good. That's just how it was. I, I see through you. I see inside. This is a good dude. And he's the one you want on your side. Not, you know. Yeah. And he was, a, he was, he was out there. And I tried to, you know. I and mean, the way he ended, it uh, definitely, it, it tore me up. And it was like, the problem is the way I was, um, it's either join them or get the hell out of there. I couldn't stay around them and then just try to do the right thing. Nah, he's buying guns and this and that. I'm like, okay, I'm buying guns too. We, that's just what it was. What are we doing today? Oh man, I'm getting a Desert Eagle. A Desert Eagle, they got another one? <laughs> you know what I mean? It wasn't just like, oh, man, you, you got a TV show, bro. You got to be smarter than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm, just, sorry, I'm just honest. That, that wasn't what it was. You know what I mean? So I had to just distance myself because I was like, oh, he, oh, you going to shoot out to Fat Burger? No, bro, knock it off. I got the guns, but I ain't shooting them. Like, they knock it off. You know, and then when what happened, happened. There was a lot of things. We connected the dots and mm -hmm. we went down the road. You know, we had a, we had a, lot, a lot of history, man. You know, we got in a lot of like street altogether stuff that happened, man. And it was just like, that's when I said, all right, bro, you're going to keep going. I got to go this way. Being being the gentleman that you were in the business was like, how were you attracting that type of energy looking back like that? Because another very good question, because, you know, people said, oh, when you when you grow up in the business and then you you act or you do a movie or a TV show with another actor, or a famous person who may or may, may not be famous at the time, then when you're done, who do you go hang out with? Mm -hmm. I go hang out with uh, either <laughs> my friends that I met that I know can fight mm -hmm. or that have a gun or that can handle themselves. 
what I'm going to do, go out in the bar fight with Leonardo DiCaprio because we did a, a show, you know what I mean? I hope he got my back when I turn around and start swinging it, dude. No. You know what I mean? It's affiliation. It's, yeah, I got cousins and they from this hood. Well, that's what, that's who we with. We're not, you know, you ain't everybody trying to fight. Sometimes you got to shoot. Well, let's go get some guns. Mm. Like, but it was nothing forced. It wasn't like, it was weird too, because even at North Hollywood High School, they bust in some kids from LA and we gravitated towards each other on some music and some hip hop stuff. And then we started a click that wound up being something of a gang, but we weren't shooting nobody. Like we wasn't, it wasn't that deep, but it was. And then it just kind of snowballed from there. Um, and that, you know, it wound up, you know, helping the authenticity of roles like Baby Boy and, and things in that nature. When yeah. they were like, well, you weren't just acting. I could tell there was something real to that. And I'm like, well, it was. I wasn't that guy, but, you know, there was also a lot of things that I went through that didn't make the news, that isn't common knowledge, that I was able to tap into, you know, and being an actor and having something to protect mm -hmm. Just because something happened to me or one of my boys, we ain't just loading up and riding on people. We had to go and go, oh, you got things to pretend, da, 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 da. And then God took care of stuff. It's crazy, man. Yeah. We got in some real deep, heavy stuff. And then cats went to jail and got killed and blah, blah, yeah. blah. And I never got any closure with it. Next thing you know, I get a script and it mimics the same shit. I was like, what? My boy got jumped and I couldn't go do nothing about it. But then the dude that did it got killed. And now I'm doing a script where I'm lining dudes up and knocking them. I'm like, won't he will? You mentioned uh, Merlin Santana. Mm. And I think, uh, you know, we end up losing him. Do something, I mean, you know, for someone talking to his peers in, in a previous interview, um, but the gentleman that played Bullethead, mm. he, he wasn't surprised, he said, about that situation because Merlin was, I guess, living kind of on the edge. You know, it makes me think about, like, what advice would you have told him? And then, again, I'm going to kind of specify, what advice would you tell, like, Orlando Brown if he were to see this? Because I, it, it seems like he's kind of one of those type. Of well, again, this is the only way I can say this because I'm trying to tell you how you know I don't, I can't give advice in the sense of, well, this is what I did, so you should do it. Well, I was there and I left the situation. I've met Orlando Brown a couple of times, you know, when he was on some whole other, and I was just like, Oof, well, see you when I see you, bro. Uh, but it's not like, yo, man, why, why don't you come on? Let me holler at you, man. Like, you know what I mean? A lot of times you're just caught in the circumstances. I'm sorry. It just is what it is. Right. What I would give advice to is the kids that actually have a choice. Cause there are some cats that, you know, it, cause it's true. I'm not sure what Orlando's whole story is, but I know Merlin wasn't a gangbanger, right? But he goes out in a blaze of glory and the hell of bullets. You know what I mean? I've seen people that come on the scene and then all of a sudden now they're just in it and they say, well, we let's go. You know what I mean? Don't just don't don't be a follower. Be a leader. There's no there's no harm in saying I'm gonna go home. What they gonna do? They ain't gonna shoot you because you <laughs> you got out the car, Trey. Yeah. They ain't gonna you know get out the car, go home. Just take a breath. Take a breath and let's do it. To, what what's going on? We finna go do this? Yeah. Well, okay. All right. Oh, would you look at the time? I will call you. I'll see you well, tomorrow. We'll talk about it, bro. Just take a breath. Because yeah. it only take one instance to ruin your entire life, man. You know, and these kids, you know, they, we get wrapped up in the moment so much, you know, and, 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 and I think um, there's not enough people saying, yeah, man, just, hey, it, woo, take it easy. You know, and that's what I learned as I'm raising kids now. Yeah. I know how I was raised. I'd have just got my ass beat. But I'm finding ways to try to understand why this kid is throwing such a goddamn filth. No, this is not that serious. What are you screaming about? Oh, yeah. you haven't quite developed the parts of your brain that make you understand that it's not the end of the world because it's a cookie and not a, <laughs> a waffle. Like, right. you know what I mean? Right. But that, I didn't, my gen generation before me didn't have that. It was just beat your ass. Do as I say, I'll give you something to cry about. You know what I mean? So, um, we have to change the way we, we the, the examples that we set. Like, you know what I mean? Like a lot of people, that's, that goes into a big part of why I accept the certain roles that I take and, and I try. Yeah. <laughs> you see you doing nothing crazy. You know what I mean? I try to be like, all right, he's got to have, you know, I've, I've turned down stuff because the dude just gets killed at the end and winds up being a bad guy. I'm like, nah, I want to be the hero. I want to be like, yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I've seen people say like, I do my whole thing because of you. I saw you in this. I was like, word? Wow. Um, mentorship and black men mentorship in Hollywood. No. Um, that's kind of what we've been uh, kind of lightly hinting at too. Yeah. I think about your film in 1990, Ghost Dad with Bill Cosby. Church. 
in the story that I heard about Bill Cosby, it seems that he has been like a mentor. He'll like kind of like put his hand on certain people. Hmm. What was that relationship like? Was it just strictly business for that movie or did he try to follow up and continue a relationship and guidance in the business? No, it was strictly business for that movie. Um, you know, and again, as a child actor, especially in that day, you were sheltered a lot. You were, you know, okay. excuse me, you had your mom or your dad or your whoever was your manager, your parent on, you know, you'd have agent, blah, 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 but you also had your parents. Mm -hmm. Make sure, oh, make sure my kid this, da, 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 da. What you going, I'm going to go see Mr. Cosby. No, you ain't. You going to take a picture or something. Okay, then come on home with me. So there wasn't like, hey, I want to talk to your son because he was so good in the movie. Let's just get him on this other thing. Like, no, it wasn't a whole lot of that. There was a lot of buffers. You know what I mean? So I don't know how, how the business works now. Um, I know that when we... He was very smart. He was very, he knew how to diffuse and how to calm you down and mm -hmm. make you laugh, get you comfortable. Cause I was comfortable like that. First day on the scene, I was like, oh my God, it's Bill Cosby. I said, oh my goodness. You know what I mean? He's like, how you doing son? He's made a laugh and made me joke. He made a joke about something. I started laughing and it was just like, let's just go, man. He's cool. That's, that's, that's Bill, you know? And it's the wildest thing, man, is, you know, I talked about all these damn episodes that I've done and the, the things, it's funny, the things that I remember, I can have total recall about and certain things. I'll be like, that happened? My brother got thrown off the set of, of uh, Ghost Dad, wow. by Sidney Portier, the director. <laughs> Please, we need this story. Well, I just found this out myself, which is amazing, because I was doing a documentary on my life. It was funny that, uh, anyway, so <laughs> we were talking about it, and I was telling my mom, I was like, yeah, man, I'm going to have my brother talk about me and, you know, my early years. And she was like, oh, you should tell the story about how you got thrown off the set of uh, Ghost Dad. And I was like, what do you mean? She, Boy, you don't remember when, the, mm. you know, I said, Okay, she's tripping. I don't know what she's talking okay. about. And I talked to my brother. I said, yeah, man, so I'm doing this uh, documentary. When the interview, I said, oh, yes, you are. Well, I know what I'm going to tell him. I said, what you going to tell him? He said, man, we're talking about Ghost Dad. Well, that was the most embarrassing day of my life. And I was like, go on. So apparently, he was coaching <laughs> me up during one of the takes. And he was talking to me like, hey, man, you're doing pretty good. So, you know, maybe next time try this and da-da-da-da. And from across the room, Sidney Portier yells, who is that talking to my actor? Get him off the set immediately. Get him out of here. And it's, they marched him to my trailer and he had to stay there for the rest of the day. And what was he like Cuban Gooding Jr. at that time or was he? Just, nope. OK. He was probably Cuba. They probably pronounce it how they be calling it. Cuba. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. But uh, he won his Oscar and he mm. saw Sydney again. Mm. And, did, did and they, they yeah, absolutely. And he walked by me, said, "Good actor," and kept walking. <laughs> and then later in life, they all took a picture with him. All Denzel, wow. all the, the yeah, yeah. So it all came full circle. Wow. So it's definitely a happy ending to that story. But I was like, "Yeah, I don't remember that, bro." Sorry. Kind of moving along in, in terms of your career highlights, and you've already touched on it, which mm -hmm. was hanging with Mr. Cooper. Yeah. Um, Mark Curry, like, what was that relationship like on set? And very good. You know, like I said, he was a he was the first like real person I met in the business, like just real down there, like, come on to my house, let's hang out, I'm doing barbecues, boom, boom, boom. One day, I'm going to a nightclub in, uh, on Thanksgiving, and I have two of my friends, no, three of my friends in the car, and we pull up to uh, Valet Park, we get out of the car, the valet guy says, that'll be $50. I said, excuse me? Well, you, don't, you don't know this face? He's like, $50. I said, we'll park on the street. Close the door. Got in the car, drove looking for parking, get find parking. Okay. One of my friends stayed there and was like, I'll oh, wait till y'all park. Started turning corners to come back around. I saw a cop car behind me. I turned another car, another cop car. When I got into the front of the club, I realized there was a whole line of cop cars behind me, but they didn't pull their siren. They were just behind me. And I opened the door to get my friend in and he looked at me, he looked at the cop and said, no, you go ahead, you go ahead. So we drove and as soon as he closed the door and we pulled it, they, they pulled us over, pulled us out the car. One at a time, back up, turn around, driver key that I turn around. They saw it was me and they, I swear, all these people that could have really cared less saw me getting arrested and acted like I was Michael Jackson. They start throwing bottles at the cop car, break the window, wow. back of the window. I'm like, we about to get beat to death by these guys. So we get arrested, you know, I bail everybody out. And then I get a call from Mark Curry and he's like, come to my house. Let's talk. Mm -hmm. And he basically explained to me what I had to do to save my job. You know, which was, you got to come clean as soon as you get to set. Because they're already talking about replacing you, who they're going to bring in, this and that. Like, you just, you you got one shot, kid. As okay. soon as you get there, grovel, you know. And I got to set the next, you know, it was a Monday, and everyone was just walking around, just, you know, kind of, right before we started, I stood up. 
uh, can I talk to everybody real quick? And they just they perked up. So just like, oh, <laughs> they been waiting. please say it. And I was like, I doing the weekend and I apologize. Never happened again. Now, but they were like, oh, but they just lined up to hug me and saved my whole career, man. You know, and between that moment, other moment, because he didn't have to do that. Who did, who did he care? Just one kid that's been with him a couple years, like find somebody else. But um, he definitely saved me there. I definitely borrowed from him. You know, timing. I learned timing like it was, it was like, what? You mean if you pause before you say the job, just how to, you know, say it a certain way. I was the king of the one liners because I was a reoccurring when it started. And I was a series regular when it ended because they would only give me one or two lines. But boy, I learned how to milk a line. All you do is say, hey, Coop, how you doing? I was like, hey, Coop, how you doing? I, do, I would put something on it and they'd be like, oh, but put it. Just say it again, say it again. Oh, yeah, we need to give him some more lines. You know what I mean? So, so. Yeah, Mark, Mark, Mark was like a was definitely like a big brother when we when I got started when I first got started. Yeah, um, there's a lot, you know, even talking about uh, hanging Mr. Cooper with Mark Curry, it was another I think moment where we got to see a black man in his element, you know, someone that looked like us, that moved like us, that talked like us, mm -hmm. and you know, Mark off camera would have his incidents. Um, he oh. would he would have a fire. That happened to him. How did that make you feel when you when you found out about that? Well, I mean, the thing it was like I said, he was the first like real person. Like I would go to his stand up routines and I hear him cursing and shit, like, oh my god, <laughs> this ain't like the little funny little TGI Friday. He's a real dude with real experiences, you know, and other stuff that yeah, it's personal mm -hmm. thing. But I was like, dude, this is a real dude, man. So, you know, and then I thought about my incidents and how he took me. And man, I was never a judgmental type of person, you know, mm -hmm. and that, it's just. That's just how it is. Like when we talk about what would I say to a peer and this and that, what type of advice? And it was just like, no, I know how it is to live in the moment. Some of us know that you don't have to stay the whole night. You don't have to do what everybody else is doing. You can get the hell out of there. You can go home, and get some sleep. And some people think that you have to do that extra mile just to impress. And um, that's that's where it gets kind of sad. Yeah. Last point on um, Mark Curry. Mm -hmm. Recently, he would go viral when he was traveling in Colorado. Um, you familiar with this story? No. No. Mm -mm. Wow, okay. So Mark Curry was recently, and I can play the video for you. He was um, recently traveling for stand-up in Colorado. He was um, in the lobby of a hotel. The janitor would feel that he didn't belong to this hotel and ask for ID. Really? Mark would deny to give him ID, and he ultimately would handle the situation accordingly in terms of he didn't really lose his cool and people applauded him for it. And... I think just because you didn't see, I'd love to play that for you. That's wild. No, no, no. Uh, well, I mean, there's a lot there. I mean, for one, uh, you know. And so Mark would so, end up, um, you know, going to the people at the front desk and say, hey, why is this gentleman following me? And then the lady that supposedly checked him in be like, well, sir, are you a, are you a guest here? She would play into that theme. Blah, 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 blah. He would ultimately um, express it and he got an outpouring of support and he would leave the hotel. But... Um, it, was he a guest at the hotel? Yes. And he was just staying, yeah, he he was just hanging out at the lobby? hotel and ended the video kind of like, this is the stuff I have to deal with. I don't want to judge him. Like I said, I, 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 I have yeah. a lot of uh, adoration for the brother and, and respect for what he's done for me in my career. You know what I mean? Um, I think there's different ways that that situation can be handled. Defused. You know. Um, so you maybe would have just showed him the card and just killed it off. Or your ID. Yeah, but it depends. Yeah. Is there more to it? Did Mark go downstairs and maybe have some type of confrontation with the guy before? And then just still like, oh, just better not come over here asking me nothing. He knows I'm here, but he wants to ask just to try to flex. Yeah, oh, yeah, hell yeah. no. Let's get him on camera. Let's do this. Karen, let's do this. Whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever. Right. That could have happened. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe the guy was just doing his job. Maybe. I don't know. The brother that was behind him, he's like, well, shit, this is my superior. He told me to back him up. I don't know who you are, bro. You gonna pull me on the car. I just doing my job, dude. I know who you are. I just, you know, uh, maybe he's, they didn't know. Obviously, they didn't know who he was, you yeah. know, and that sucks. But, yeah. you know, uh, there's a lot of levels to it, but there's a lot, there's too many unknowns for me to give a full, you know, yeah. but I just looking at an outside and I would say, you know, it. It is important for him to document it, put it on by like, look how they doing us, blah, 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 blah. Yo, watch how you treat people because you never know. I could be somebody and now you could have lost your job. You could have got fired got behind this. He got uh, spent, yeah, I'm sure yeah. something could have happened, you know. 
No, you know, so there, there's also that, but it's definitely a two-way street. You know, how far you want to take it? How serious is it? Mm. Where was he again? Denver? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I've been in Denver too much, but I might go back. So, you know, uh, to the people that were, no, I'm um, But yeah, no, that was, that was my, my yeah. first time hearing of that. Yeah. So um, just thinking about, you know, again, navigating in the space of Hollywood being a, yeah. a black man. I would also think about another piece of work that you've done is in quick question. Was there a reason mm, if you can dispel this rumor, but was there a reason why Hang with Mr. Cooper came to an end? Hmm. And then I've heard something about someone played a joke on the set of Hang with Mr. Cooper or did a some type of racial thing with putting a noose in a person's locker. I remember the noose in the locker thing. Um, no, I mean, you know, shows strive to get to syndication, which means 100 episodes. We did three seasons where I was uh, a reoccurring role, and then two se- we got picked up. Another thing unheard of. We got picked up for the final two seasons in one WAP. And they were like, we're doing two more seasons. It'll get us to 100 episodes, and that'll probably be it. So we all kind of knew it was coming. It wasn't like, oh, snap, it's over now. Uh, the next series I did, excuse me, uh, there was an issue. <laughs> you know, that sort of went on for way longer than it did. But there were some, there was, there, to be fair, there were two sides, okay. you know. For one, we all agreed to be all paid the same, which just sucked for the lead. Because it's like, why, if it's the smart, it's my show. Why is it everybody getting paid the same? You know what I mean? So he had a legitimate gripe. Um, but, you know, powers of B were just like, oh, you griping? Are you, you know, okay. Yeah. So, uh, but no, I didn't think, I didn't think that, uh, you know, if it was, it was kind of above my yeah. pay grade. Okay. Another project, Smart Guy. Mm-hmm. We would see a black father taking care of his young man, his young yeah, sons, which is another, I think, you know, it's interesting because as I'm going through your body of work, yeah. I see less of those type of roles. I don't know if that's fair to say. Yeah, that was very unique, man. Yeah, it's true. Just the dad. Like, where's the mom? They didn't even think about that. It was like, you got a black dad running, raising a home. What? Yeah. I've only met one dude that's ever done that. Um like no some real life shit like yeah the one she left and you but you got all the kids hmm, fair enough um but yeah man yeah you you know it's tough too because the 90 sitcoms just fell all the way off in, in general why not quite sure not quite sure you know it was a different era a lot of reality tv a lot of stuff like that we had to kind of show that we can hold our own you know what i mean so you know they're making a resurgence which was great even with family time it was just like oh wow the black sitcom is back yeah but it's on bounce you know, I mean, not everybody gets it. Oh, it's free. Everybody gets it. All right, cool. But you know, there's this and the third. So you know, I'm excited. I'm excited for shows like the one that I just signed on to with Disney called Saturdays, where I play the black father. There I have mm. me. Golden Brooks plays the wife. You know what I mean? And we have two children. One is uh, Danielle Jalladay. The other one, Jermaine Harris. And we're centered around the skating culture in Chicago. So okay, it's going to premiere scary. on Disney, and then it's going to. Uh, and then it's going to go to Disney Plus. We did 15 episodes. We filmed it all in Chicago. It was very cold. Very, very cold. But very funny. You know, we had yeah. Norman Vance uh, Jr., who is the showrunner, the first black showrunner of a Disney show. First. You know what I mean? You got Marseille Martin you know, from Blackish. She's a 16 year old black executive producer of the show. You know what I'm talking about? Gotcha. Very historic. Very proud of this project. And uh, we put a lot into it. And uh, you, you're going to see the fruits of that very soon. I'm going to kind of get to the tail end of this. This, mm-hmm. this has been a great interview with you, sir. My man. Um, on Smart Guy, I think about your best friend on the show, which was Jason Weaver, yeah. who played the character. Mm-hmm. We interviewed Jason Weaver in 2019 and talked about, um, one, the, ser- the sitcom itself, and then his own career, mm-hmm. and how he turned $2 million deal down with Disney, coincidentally enough, right. um, to be able to get royalties from The Lion King. Ah, yeah, I remember that story. You know, just with you having experience, and I would guess at this point you're seasoned in the business of Hollywood and right. whatnot. Mm-hmm. Has there been any moments where you've maybe now looked at, I should have took this deal or this should have worked out, and you kind of like... Well, I kind of touched on it. It was like the, uh, you know, me, me booking a TV show without letting the success of something else that would have altered my career drastically. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, I got to, I just, I got to pay these, I got to do this. And I was like, do you? You don't have to. And they want you to just sit tight for a minute, you know what I mean? And let, let it play out. Um, but, you know, a lot of things just kind of, 
with my career, a lot of things just happen. It was, uh, it was a story behind this, story behind that. Even with Baby Boy, you yeah. know, it was a lot of inner politics that happened there. We need a whole new separate interview to get into that. But there was there were beefs, there were yeah. inner politics, there was just straight up, quote unquote, hating. There were relationships, and there was <laughs> there was a lot going on there, and that changed some things. But for me, it was just like you know, I know what my bread and butter is, so I'm not tripping. It either is or it ain't, and it, it will or it won't. But yeah, not a lot of regrets, just because. I, I, for me, like even as a rapper, I have close friends in the in the West Coast underground scene that were just like, bro, you need to go independent. Don't be worried about getting no deal. And I was like, nah, nah, I'm gonna try to get a deal. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go meet with Warner Brothers and then it's go, you know what I mean? And I do, and they go, hey, gospel rap. And I'm like, what the, you know? And, and but I had to learn that. You can't just tell me this is the way to do it, and then I'll just listen. And then if I'm successful, I'm just like, huh. Eh. You know, I need to go find out. Let me try the hard way. Let me try the long route myself. And um, I still have, I feel, I still feel young. You know what I mean? I still, you know, in the right light, I still look uh, young. So I, <laughs> so yeah. I don't feel like I've wasted, you know, any time. Um, but it's different now. You know what I mean? As, as I'm putting out music, you know, I signed a, a distribution deal with Amplified and they're like, okay, we're going to get your stuff out there, out there. You ready to go on tour and do all this? I'm like, no, no, no. I want to put the music out there, but my kids are six and three. I'm not going on a tour. If I was 20, I'd go on tour. 46, man, please. I'm a, but I, I have no problem giving to the culture. Yeah. I got a lot to give, a lot to give, uh, and oh, they're going to get it. Just in, the, you know, um, last few questions. Yeah. But just in terms of the spirit of. Can you say a few questions? Okay. Just in terms of the spirit of you being someone. Again, I feel legendary as far as a career yeah. to make a name for yourself in this business is somewhat people really strive for and they yeah. lose themselves trying to do that. Yeah. Um, do you feel that you've been properly supported or do you think the industry has overlooked Omar Gooding? Um, at oh, that's easy. Point? Yeah, that's easy. No, 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 no. Definitely not supported and, and definitely overlooked. But, you know, it, it's also one of those things where this is interesting. It's like I go, damn, what if I did do eight mile and then did this and that, blah, 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 blah. You know, I've, I've stayed off of TMZ, but like, I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to say, oh, I would have been fine. I would have handled it and I would have oh, did this man. and I would have been successful. Blah, blah, blah. But who knows? It would have been like, what? That, who I knows? To, I would have been on that six, if I ever got six billion dollars. Yeah, like, I, I wasn't ready for that then. I take yeah. it now. I know exactly what to do with every okay. little piece of what I'm going to get. But at the time, I'd just be like, wee. Because it was easy, especially as a child actor. And I think that, that's what hurts a lot of child actors. One thing I remember, I remember this weird feeling of, Oh, that shit is easy. That's boring. I'm going to have tons of money and just be super rich. God, I really felt that way. Every I would go in, I would just book. I'm like, oh, you're going to work. You know, and then even as a young man, like my wife, I remember she was, we were just, she was just my girlfriend. I'm like, oh, I got this audition for this thing. She's like, audition? Oh, my God. Where are you going to be filming now? And I'm like, no, no, it's just, I'm just, you know, meeting with the director. It's like, you always book it. <laughs> so she just is already upset about it. I'm just like, damn, I said that. Dude. I didn't even, you know, but. Yeah, that, that, that's kind of how I looked at it young. Now I'm like, look, I understand the importance of making the right choices, mm -hmm. um, not only with roles and so forth and so on, but financially, you know, if I do tell kids, oh man, it seems like enough, but trust me, it's never enough. Inflation, everything's rising fast, invest. Get you some property, spread your money around, don't put all your eggs in one barrel, and don't have one person control on all your money either. I'd have been through several accounts too. Okay. They all get you. You got, they just, they you got all... robbed? Oh, oh, what? And I'd be like, okay, so what's left? What do you mean how left? Did they, how did they rob you? Because you don't know the ignorance. That's how they rob you. You know, I got a check for $20,000. You gave me five. Where's the other 15? Oh, we, well, that's gone. And what? Well, how much were bills? Hey, two or three, but the rest, the rest is gone. I was like, what about the uh, taxes? Oh, we didn't pay taxes because we were paying. Well, how much did you take? Oh, well, you know, I, I got to get paid. I'm not doing this for free. Uh, how much? Oh, you just making up numbers? That's your money? Like, it was, it, I could add, motherfucker. <laughs> this is crazy. What are you talking about? Okay, fired, fired. Now let me find somebody else. And they go, oh, well, we got to look through it. You said to go through that many people. Is that just <sighs> the norm? Is that just the industry? Yeah. It is, and then, you know, yeah, back in the day, I was thinking about that too. I was like, damn, I had, a, had an agent and a manager mm. and a lawyer 
and an accountant. Mm -hmm. God dang, then I pay taxes. What, what, what did I bring home? <laughs> and then they put half of it in the trust fund until I can't touch it when I was 18. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you really wasn't making a lot of money. Well, it was a lot of money to me. You know, then the old mom quit the job and she's just a manager. Oh, so I'm paying rent, bills and all that. Whew, I need another job. <laughs> I need to get a record deal. You uh, mentioned earlier in the interview, 91 episodes of Family Time. Yeah. In my like circle of peers, I would assume that a lot of people didn't see Family Time. Right. Do you think that we, as a community, didn't give Family Time a chance because it was on a bounce TV? That's what I'm But, you know, the thing about Bounce is it's the first over the air broadcast network for African American programming, which means it's free television. We all had access to it. You just had to unhook your cable box and you stick an antenna or just put the, you know, put the thing on loosely and then just scan for channels. And it was like 13.1 or something mm -hmm. like we all could get it. We just didn't know how mm -hmm. people say you scan through your, your cable box. You'd be like, I don't see Bounce TV. Why would I? I said, we can go online and watch it. Like, ah, okay, fine. Yeah. You know, now right during the pandemic, everybody streamed it. Everybody's seen it now. <laughs> he went through 91 episodes fast. He keeps telling me, can we get some more? Are you greedy? 91 episodes? You binge watch 91 episodes. You need something else to do. What do you need, 80 something for syndication now? Yeah, it's like 86. Yeah. So it, it went down. It did go down. Yeah, yeah. But we were, on, we, were on, we were on bounce. You mentioned, you know, you mentioned, uh, I think what, lines up with your legacy and how you will be remembered and how you're kind of creating a space for yourself to mm -hmm. mentor, give game to young filmmakers, writers, and actors. Sure. Um, I think about the men that were around you. Yeah. You know, your father being who he was for your family, yeah. um, for your career, and then even John Singleton being who he was. These seem to be black men that were lined up to propel you forward. Yeah. Reflecting on that, how do you feel about losing them, but mm. also about representing them as you move forward? Yeah, that's dope. Um, they, you know, I'm the type of person that the people around me serve a purpose. Just keeping it a hundred. You know, people either that inspire me, um, help me create, um, guide me. Mm -hmm. Uh, my father was good at, he wasn't, well, he was kind of preachy, but not really. He was just an orator, but he would just say, look, this is how, and this is what, and this is how it is, and these people here, and this, and you got to understand, and I would just listen. Mm -hmm. Real good at listening, you know, soaking it up, soaking it up. And right towards the end of his life, my wife got pregnant, and he was so happy and so proud that we didn't do it the way he did it. Mm. This was just him being as honest and raw as he possibly would be. He's like, I met your mother. It wasn't about love. She was pregnant. Nigga. Like we got married because that was my job. Mm. That was my duty. And then I had to go get the money. So I wasn't always around. So I was always chasing this. And then, you know, his career mm. fell off when he went to South Africa when I was born and he got the apartheid thing happened. And then he was blacklisted for a while and he had to restart his career. So he was out chasing blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? But it wasn't like I was leaving my wife that I loved and the kid that I was providing. I'm a provider. That's what I did. But you didn't see that and just have kids and then get married right away. Blah, blah, blah. You took your time. You fell in love. And then you lived with that love for a while. And now you're bringing life into this world. Bravo, son. Mm -hmm. Fucking bravo. And I was like, well, damn, that, that was deep. You know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and even my brother, he would, well, I mean, he's still here. So, but, you know, he would tell me things about having a wife and this and that and so how women think and so forth and blah, blah, blah. And I would soak in the parts that made sense and then throw away the bullshit. But, you know, and then with, you know, with John, there was a lot of game that I just learned from him mm -hmm. on how to develop a character, how to stay locked into a character. Mm -hmm. The process with him and I, with Sweet Pea, he knew it was in me, but he still had to bring it out. I had to find a way to hone all of the anger and the raw aggression at 24 years old. I'm just, what? I'm just yoked and working out. What if I'm ready to go? And he's like, all right, cool, but calm down. <laughs> you got it, you know what I mean? And it came to a point where I was just talking through my teeth because I wanted to go crazy, but I had to find a way to just internalize all of it and then just focus it. And once I got it, it was like Rocky Three. He was like, see the eye of the tiger rock? That's what you got to get. Once I got the eye locked in, it was easy. Mm -hmm. It took 
about four months, you know, three months of preparation and then two weeks of rehearsal and then two weeks of just kind of feeling it. And then I was locked. Once I was locked in, oh, actually, you know, a little bit less than that because, uh, no, oh, yeah, no, it was four months because when I auditioned, it took a month for them to tell me that I got the role. So that's what that extra wow. month came. It was wild. And, uh, and then, then he sculpt. And then he said, okay, man, you know, I want you to mimic this dude, kind of hang with this dude. And this dude wasn't some just ex gangbanger that had knowledge. No, active. Uh, one of the OGs from 6 Soul was like, let's go for a ride. Wow. <laughs> you know, and this wasn't like, he'll protect you, protect my ass. He like, some shit go down, don't be no weenie, nigga, let's go. And I was just like, okay, I, yeah, all right. But at 24, I was like, I, I wanted to prove myself to him. I was hoping something happened. Right. Like, no bullshit, I was, but God was good, thank God. You know, and then you know, he'd be like, that's the end of the story. And he was <laughs> training day and he, well, anyway. So yeah, man, they, they meant a lot, but I, I still hear them. And it's, 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 when, when someone has an impact on your life, it, that doesn't go anywhere, you know what I mean? And uh, luckily, me and my father, we were very close, but we also fought. Like, we were like brothers in that regard. Like, you know what I mean? I was closer to him than anybody in the sense of, you know, let's talk about it, you know? And for a while, it was a father thing where he would just kind of talk and yeah, I try to respond. Just, no, you just you too young. You don't have no, you know. But I had a, uh, a better understanding at, at, at a lot of things. I always say, "You're wise for your age. You're wise beyond your age." Oh man, how the hell do you even uh, grasp that? You know. And towards his end, he would actually be like, "Oh man, okay, yeah, I get that." And I was like, yeah, "What?" <laughs> I wasn't expecting him to agree with me or even understand my point. But he was like, "No, I see what you're saying." And I was like, "Wow," and that was dope because I just learned, "Oh shit, you can change, you can grow," and that helps me in my relationships. You know, my relationships are, I got three of them, my wife and my two kids. Those are the only relationships that I worry about that matter because we're all growing and living together under one roof. <laughs> but those relationships, they go home. You know what I mean? But it helps to go, ah, I might be wrong. Mm. I might be wrong. All right, let me take a moment. And I'm quick to walk out. Side. <laughs> Not walk out, go for a smoke and drive to Vegas. Walk outside and think about it. Da, da, da. Where you go? I just need a minute. Because that is in me, but I need a minute. This just happened to <laughs> But it was real, and I needed a minute. And I left the baby. Where you going? The son was crying. No, where you going? I closed the door. And I was like, ah. I said, I'll be right back. Where you going? I said, I'll be the fuck back. I was like, oh, shit. My older son went, <gasps> and I walked out the door, and I was like, God damn. But I took a minute. You know what I mean? The guy was still. And I walked back in and we talked and this and that, blah, blah, blah. It wasn't immediate. Mm -hmm. Kids had to go to bed. She had an attitude. <laughs> Once they got sleep, we talked and talked to talk to talk to talk. But then we turned that corner, did some yelling, but turned the corner and was like, oh, okay. You got to hear that it's not, you know, you, you ain't as smart as you think you are, man. Sometimes you just got to listen instead of always just think, oh, man, I think, what? what? Oh, you know, let me hold on a second. Because you'll know. You'll know, it's like, this don't feel right. What's going on? When you start to feel, oh, I'm going crazy. I need therapy. I need to die. I need to pray. No, something. You ain't that smart. Relax. Settle yourself. Be still. The answer's there. Come. Oh, now I get it. Let me see if this works. Oh, it worked. Okay. Won't he do it? You know? So, uh, I'm grateful for the men in my life, for them leading by example, um, because I know how I am. I need... You know, you can tell me whatever you want, but you got to show me. I did. I, oh, this is the way to do it. That's how friends of mine, peers, they said, you just how you do your rap career. You got to do this. And I was like, nah, let me see what you mean. Oh, now I get it. Okay, now I know. Pop, this is how you raise a kid. What you talk about, man? I'm ready to jump out. Of oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh. Mm -hmm. Then show me how to be a father and be like, yeah, well, son, hey, son, you know what? Good job. Damn, I needed to hear that. Maybe my sons need to hear that. Go, go ahead, boy. Not, what are you doing? Knock it off. But, uh, hey, good job, son. Look at that. Okay. Good job. Now he's beaming. <laughs> oh, he was crying one day over something. The kid pushed him. I said, who's the strongest dude you know? He's like, you? And I said, well, what are you crying for? This dude pushed me. I said, you're my son. You know how strong you are? Mm -hmm. And his face lit up. And I heard him telling his mom, he's like, you know, I'm going to be super strong. I'm dead because I'm dead, son. I'm going to be strong, too. I'm going to be stronger than him. And I was letting him around the corner like, this is my boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? But. I don't know, but there's, 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 it, it, it baffles me that people that, you know, sometimes it's a mistake. Sometimes you just can't get along with a person mm -hmm. and you have to go your separate ways. Uh, but that's not the kid's fault. 
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think it's incumbent upon us to take more of a responsibility to demand to be in your child's life and be an influence. As long as you have something to give that can be uh, a betterment to them, meaning learning from your mistakes. You know what I mean? Some kids just be like, no, you be fucking up. So why am I going to listen to you? It's like, yeah, because I know the error of my way. And that's what I'm trying to impart on you. You know, not just do as I say, not as I do. Well, I actually kind of, I kind of like that saying, honestly. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. But you didn't do it. No, 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 no. But I know, I know how to.